Guys, this is one of the most impressive videos that I've seen in regards to a conversation about gender, transgenderism, gender fluidity. This is a clip from Charlie Kirk at a recent event that he did at, I think it was at a, a college where he did an open forum, allowed an open mic where people to come up and ask questions and challenge his point of view. And the conversation that you see between this student and Charlie Kirk is it's very eye opening. It's very educational in regards to, um, you know, I think it, it challenges the narrative of the whole gender fluidity conversation in a really powerful way, which we need to talk about. But I want you to stick around to the end because the end of this video is so powerful. It really caught me off guard. It was unexpected. And I think that to me, what we see at the end of this video is the kill shot of this conversation that is happening culturally and it needs to it needs to be seen and it needs to be shared. But before we move any further, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Cap Chatfield. I create content for the kingdom of God and I train Christian thought leaders, influencers, and entrepreneurs to create a movement around their message through media for the glory of God. You can click the link to the website, my website in the description of this video to learn more. But without further ado, let's check this out. So my question is about what you said earlier about um, Justice Kentaji Brown's uh, Jackson's qualifications for the Supreme Court and how you mentioned that uh, she was unable to uh, define what a woman is. And I'd like to compare that to um, Justice Barrett. So uh, Justice Jackson went to a public high school, attended Ivy League Law, law School, um, clerked for the Supreme Court, was a public defender, uh, served on the sentencing commission, was a district judge, and served on the Court of Appeals. And um, as for um, Justice Barrett, she was a Supreme Court clerk, and uh, she also sat in Court of Appeals. And when um, she was being questioned by the Senate during her confirmation, she uh, was asked to, to name the freedoms of the First Amendment, which um, she struggled with. So my question is, what makes Justice Jack, uh, Jack uh, pardon me, uh, Justice um, Barrett more qualified than Justice Brown? First of all, what does your shirt say? I can't see that. Trump 22, 24 years in prison. Oh, okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, that's, got it. But we could talk about that in a second. Um, I, I was like, seeing double. I was like, are you a Trump fan or not? Because, yeah, obviously not. Um, yeah, I mean, how is, by the way, how is Katanji Brown Jackson's Ivy League credentials impressive if she got in with affirmative action? Why is that impressive? And by the way, Amy Coney Barrett did her entire hearing without a shred of notes in front of her. You remember that? She had nothing but a notepad, all from memory. Katanji Brown Jackson, I will just ask you, do you think it's important that one of the nine people determining the most important interpretation of our laws knows what a woman is. Well, this is where it kind of gets painful. And this is where, this is where we are in society. I mean, the, the fact that people feel like they can't say definitively what a man or a woman is because they're afraid of offending other people. This is why, man, I'm thankful that they're at least having this conversation because the fact that people are afraid to even have the conversation without feeling like they're being demonized or attacked, it's just not healthy for society. But nevertheless, you see, he's going to start to um, really have difficulty in explaining uh, what a woman is shortly. Right. Um, well, my counter to that is that we shouldn't really be seeing the world in black and white. Um, and a woman is, it's more than what meets the eye for a definition. Um, no, it's not. No, we should see the world through male and female. Yeah. Why? Definitely. Well, why? Because I live in reality, not in Narnia or some sort of weird, created, academic, abstract space that doesn't exist. So why shouldn't a person be socially welcome to identify with a gender outside of the binary? Well, anyone can pretend to be something they're not, but that doesn't make them the thing that they're not. Can I be black? No. 
oh, but why can't I socially become black? Blackface, right? I can pretend, wear camouflage, masquerade as something that I'm not, right? How's that different than a trans person? Race and gender are two completely separate things. They have nothing to do with each other, and the existence of being transgender does not imply the existence of being transracial. So, but why? That this is where it gets really, it gets so confusing for me because I feel like we're constantly as a society redefining the rules. It's like every year now, it seems like the rules have changed. The chains have moved. The boundaries have been shifted or eliminated altogether. So it's like what was true last year is all of a sudden no longer true. It's, it's, it's way too fluid. And ultimately, it begs the question, what is ultimately true? What is the truth? If your truth is your truth and my truth is my truth, but your truth contradicts my truth and vice versa, then we can't both be right. We're either both wrong or one of us is right and the other's wrong. But this this idea of like, it, it's we desperately need a standard for truth, and I'll share that more more about that shortly. You can you can pretend to say that you have ovaries when you don't, but you can't put makeup on to pretend to be a black person. What transgender women are claimed to have ovaries? Uh, there's lots of men that pretend to have ovaries. In fact, the CDC guidance says right now that men can chest feed. Do you think men can chest feed? That's not the sole criterion for being. So let me ask you a question. What is a woman? By the way, just personal hot take. That that is so gross. If you're a man trying to chest feed a kid. Gosh, that's that's just wrong. A woman is someone who identifies as one answer the question yeah. without saying the word woman you can't say the word woman that's that's called circular reasoning it's like saying a tree is something that looks like a tree so i'll ask again what is a woman a woman is a person who lives a lifestyle aligned with feminine characteristics not necessarily your chromosomes or your genitals this this thing that comment right there is so confusing to me because one of the things that society is trying to do right now is eliminate gender roles completely, okay? Saying, well, just because I'm a man doesn't mean I need to do manly things or what is a manly thing or just because I'm a girl doesn't mean I need to do girly things or there's really no such thing as girly things. That's one of the conversations happening right now is trying to eliminate all gender roles. If you're a man, you don't need to go to the workplace and you don't need to go provide for your family. If you're a woman, you don't need to, you know, help raise the kids and stay home and make a home for for everybody in the family. No, those gender roles, they're they're not necessary anymore. For the man, those gender roles are not necessary anymore. Okay? It's all fluid. You can do whatever you want. You can be whoever you want. You can wear whatever you want. But at the same time, if someone identifies as the opposite sex, they will typically Wear the clothes, do the things, speak in the same mannerisms, say, have the same expressions as the as the people group of the opposite se- of the opposite sex. They will adopt the gender norms of that sex. So, what is it? Is it that we don't have gender norms or, at all, or do these gender norms in our society actually confirm your your sex or your gender? You can't have it both ways. You can't say that gender norms don't matter and then at the same time also say that if you ascribe to those gender norms, that's what makes you a part of that that category. You see what I'm saying? Like this conversation is just crazy. It's just crazy that we're talking about this and we're uh, there's no sense of 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 a firm foundation in what's true. It's so so someone who just wears a dress. So what you are doing is you are reducing womanhood to a costume. No. Um, so, are you suggesting that, like, a transgender woman 
goes about her day pretending to be a woman, but then when she gets home, she starts acting like a man? No, delusional in every part of life, I understand that, but that doesn't mean they're not delusional. Can, I mean, there, there's a series of mental conditions where you could pretend to be a wolf. Can you be trans species, too? Does, does your own mental condition dictate external reality, yes or no? Not necessarily. Okay, then why do you believe that a biological man can become something that he is not because he thinks it? Because gender is not interchangeable with sex. Yeah, right. So there are zero genders. There are only two sexes. Gender is a made-up term that started in the academy in the 1960s. Talking about sex, which is the only thing that actually can be proven and that matters, X, 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 Y, I will ask the question again, why is it that a man can suddenly become a dress and can be treated exactly the Remember, stick to the end. The end of this is the most important part. Same as a woman that is biologically, not just biologically different, but somebody has a different brain, a different hormonal system, menstruate, have children. I'll be very honest with you. It is so unbelievably insulting to women to have men have to lecture that all it takes is some weird dude with testosterone can put makeup on, wear a thong and a dress, and he suddenly becomes a woman. Here's it's weird. It's just weird. It's just not normal. It's it's just it's strange. But if, if you want to do that, do you? God bless you. But to the point of like we have we as a society have to reconstruct what a woman is or what a man is around that. It's just confusion. At the essence of the issue is that no matter how much surgery you do, no matter how many drugs you take, you don't stop being the thing that you were born. You don't get to determine your reality by a stroke of the will. I don't deny for a second that the trans person thinks that they are. Certain people think that they're younger than they are. Some people think they're taller than they are. Some people think they're richer than they are. Some people think they're innocent when they're not, like Bob Menendez. There's plenty of delusional people in this world. It's up for society to say no to the delusional and yes to reality. It is for us to not allow us to be reigned under the tyranny of somebody's imagination. Do you have a response? And then we'll wrap it up. Here's the kicker. Okay? The moment we've all been waiting for. This is so important, guys. I'm not going to put you on the spot. Right. I appreciate you being here tonight. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, next question. And give it up for him. That's not easy to do at a conservative event. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. That. That moment. I want to replay it for you real quick. This moment right here. He gives the kid, the student, an extra opportunity to respond, a final opportunity to respond. You can tell that he's like visibly really stumped. I mean, he's in a he's in a situation right now where he's been taught so much, he's been fed so much by the media, by academia, the culture telling him what's right, what's wrong, and he's having all of this confronted with truth right now. And he's working through a lot and he doesn't know what to say. Right. I'm not going to put you on the spot. Right. I appreciate you being here tonight. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Charlie doesn't take the opportunity to make a fool of him. All right, next question. And then he does this. And give it up for him. That's not easy to do at a conservative event. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. And that's so beautiful to me because one of the difficult things about having these conversations, especially from a kingdom perspective, is that it becomes these like these gotcha moments, these clips where people are, their reputation is tarnished, they're made to look like fools and that's just not, that's not the heart of God. Like we're called to expose lies. We're called to preach the truth, but we're also called to do it in love. And this is what it says in first Corinthians chapter 13, verse two, it says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all my mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could re remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. 
Guys, let me tell you that you can have all of the right answers. You can have perfect theology. You can win every debate. But if you don't have love, it's worthless. You can be right and not be righteous. And that's one thing I just appreciate so much about this exchange is that we need to come back to a place where we can have these types of conversations where we can we can get real. We don't have to like step on eggshells around each other. But at the end of the day, we can care about the other person, honor the other person and say, hey, you're a human being. You have dignity. You're created in the image of God. God loves you. And uh, and and I believe that this type of discourse is going to be what brings healing back to this country and beyond. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments. Let me know if this exchange blessed you, if it challenged you, uh, or if you disagree with anything that you saw here. And also consider if you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys in the next video.